Leroy. What's up? <laughs> Or goosies. Wow, that game was over in like three seconds. I mean, Von Giggle just I, put the dagger in him. <laughs> that team you, stinks. You know what's amazing? <laughs> I'm no defensive guru. But after the first time, the DB came to the sideline like, what do y'all want me to do? Yeah. I it's... mean, don't you have to come to the realization we need to – do something different. I don't know what you like. Two was talking about this. I don't know what you do because they had on that first touchdown two guys willy nilly down the sideline. It's either do we do HN because he's got a linebacker on him and that's not going to work, or do you do Cheetah who's just like whoop, whoop, whoop. and there he is. He's free once again, running down the field, seventy eight yards. I mean, holy smokes! But you know. They always seem to have a nice mix, right? Like, I think part of the thing that makes this offense so good is that you know that Cheetah play is there. Yeah. But you don't know when it's coming. Well, I like the fact that him and Tua just never seem to be on the same page, but it doesn't really seem to matter because, like, every play, Cheetah's like, yeah, I kind of ran the wrong route there, but Tua threw the perfect spot. I adjusted, or Tua saw me. I wasn't running the right route, but it doesn't matter because I'm the cheetah, and I'll just go figure it out. And, like, so these two just have, like, maybe things aren't perfect, but they have that kind of chemistry right now where it's just like, ah, oh, yeah, Tua, he had HM, but he saw me, and obviously you're going to throw it to me because I'm going to run past everybody. So it's crazy how how these guys have put together such a chemistry with one another that – because th- these, because they're so good between accuracy and speed, they can just make up for anything. It's amazing. Right. But, but here's the other thing, that when you go to all of the top duos in the league, they'll all say the same thing, that maybe that route wasn't supposed to be run that way, but we were on the same page, right? Bernie's told you that with me. Yeah, Like, I never had any plays designed for me, but Bernie would turn around and look and go, uh, <laughs> be available, right? I knew what that meant. And, and I think that the other thing that we need to understand is this. And I've told people this. They don't quite understand it. You know why a deep ball looks good? Mm-hmm. And they go, oh, the deep ball hit him right in the bread basket. Because the receiver is adjusting his speed his angle, all these things, right? He's adjusting while he's adjusting to the ball. So it looks good, but he's the one controlling. All the quarterback has to do is kind of put it in an area where he can catch it. The good receivers always seem like that's where it was supposed to go because they adjust to get it. Tyreek, to look over this shoulder and then turn look over this shoulder and catch it like it's no big deal, that is hard to do. And the crazy thing is he apparently is so fast that he did the wrong thing and then said, I fixed it because Tua put it in the right place. I went the wrong way. It's almost like he was running a post and so Tua goes, no, it was supposed to be a corner. It's crazy. <laughs> but it's that's, the, I, that, that's but like, the thing that makes that, that good, that relationship good, is that you know if you throw it to the open area, your guy's going to go get it. Oh. Right? And, so and and he and and he knows and Cheetah knows if I just get past this guy, he gonna put it in a place where I could catch it. The Dolphins were explosive yesterday. Yes, the Commanders stink, but like immediately, to, like you're already on a historic pace with three throws because it's like <laughs> you're already on this crazy pace with Tyree. But it took three throws. It's like, all right. We already had 130 yards, a little 60 touchdown, a little 78. Dude, and did, uh did I did I I've always explained to you guys what motion does to a defense. Oh my god. Now, what Cheetah does that's so unique. He does very fast motion. Scares the hell out right? of So it, they don't have enough time to give all their signals because when he says hut, it, it's go time. 
and he does that quick motion outside, right? It, like, I don't know how you defend it because the only other, the only teams that have given the Dolphins problems are the teams that kind of squanch everybody in the middle of the field and take away those deep ends and those crossing routes. Yeah. But maybe Washington did that and they went over the top. It was crazy, so dude. It was, cra- it was crazy. I mean, that was one of those games. They were so scared of one thing that the other thing was going off at will also. Yeah, like tough they one for to run the ball when they wanted to. Tough one for Ron Rivera to take over the defensive play call. <laughs> He's gonna take well, over. You're also take... taking over the de- defensive play calling without uh sweat and um who's the, the outside guy? Uh Chase uh Oh yeah, they traded him to San Fran. They trade to San Fran. Is yeah. it Chase Young? Chase, Chase Young? Young. Chase, Chase Young, Chase Young, yeah. Young. Right. So they try try having a a, a a defensive, you know. Any type of defensive secondary with no pass rush. It doesn't work. Get us some headlines brought to you by a new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. Dolphins, they win 45 15. Tua's numbers 18 to 24, 280, two touchdowns, both of them to Tyreek Hill, who finished with five catches, 157 yards, and Devon A. Chan in his true return, 103 total yards, two rushing touchdowns. He's also very fast. Wow. And, and, and that's that's not even the crazy thing. We're talking about Devon A. Chan. He ain't even the lead rusher on the team, baby. Nope. <laughs> nope. So, like, you try to work somebody else in, and, I mean, I don't know if he'll end up being the backup, but as of right now, he's the second leading rusher. Yeah, they it's are. Just, so fast, so, I, I mean, tight ends getting some action. Oh, Julian Hill! What a play that was! Yeah. Little, little shimmy shake from from Tua on the th- yeah. Tua was a monster on third down yesterday, dude. He was he was killing it. I mean, I mean it was free rusher and he shakes him. Yep, like, shook him, dude. Like it was he was in the zone yesterday. I think that was one of those things that you know they took care of the football. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a clean game. Like I know, look, I'm not trying to sit here and say, hey, you beat the Grizzlies. Who cares? You're on the road. You beat them by thirty was never close, and you played a clean game, which is what I've been wanting him to do for like four weeks in a row. More importantly, the trajectory, instead of being flat, looks yeah. like it's pointing up. Pointing um, up. I think and- that's the most important thing because, because here's what happened. You look at a team like San Francisco who had that rut, and now they're trying to turn it on Yep. versus a team like Philly who was coasting because they find a way to win. And they got molly whopped. Add that to your list. That's do you think that's intangible? Molly whopped. Molly whopped. I don't think it is. is that okay, a... give it back oh. to me. Give it back. Give it back. No, I take it back. Take that's it yours. off the list. Refund. Huh? Yeah. That that's not. Uh, that's my. That's in my uh, vernacular. Growing up, we were just talking yesterday. Lira and I were texting back and forth, and we were wondering: Do you think that Christian Wilkins makes fun of Zach Sealer for his inability to chase after Dude. the quarterback like he does? Because he looks so much more tired. Because Christian Wilkins can chase a QB down for like oh, fifty right. yards. Zach Sealer, if he doesn't get him in those first four, he's so tired. Right? It's like <laughs> you got this one. Uh, <laughs> Cause he, looks- but if he gets there, he'll kill him. I mean, like he got like there was like the next play after I said that, like he got him like immediately, just like a bear, just like, ah. right. He just he just opened up and, and there was nowhere to go. What about uh? Oh my God, who who was it? Oh, Nick Chubb almost had a sack. Bradley Chubb. Bradley Chubb. Bradley Chubb again. Yeah, he just seems like he's there, but not quite. Well, you know who's always there. Andrew Von Ginkle. Dude, I can't uh, wait. This, Can you believe this? Oh, Here's what I find hard to believe. Now, he was balling last year. Yep. Right? Before Fangs got here. Same thing with uh, Agba. Agba was getting putting in good work to the point where they didn't just get rid of him because, I mean, they could use him now, you know, with the, the injury, uh, with the injury bug hitting. But... You can't get you can't take him off the field. He's amazing. How you go from not playing to almost being a, a necessary 
part of the defense. He is just always in the right spot. Right. He had the pick six yesterday. He's a Q- QB killer. And like this is what we said. Like, look, Jalen Phillips, losing Jalen Phillips is not great, but we saw well, we did see this movie early in the year, and this guy was arguably your best defender. And right. so you're gonna give him more action and more impact positions. And I was just it was crazy. His first game back, he's just it, it was and I know, look, I again I put this I know that commander's team gives it this dude, he has NFTF, he's always in the right spot. And he almost had a block punt yesterday, too. Yeah. He was, like, this close from having a block punt. That guy's amazing. i tell you the other thing. Even with that lead, they didn't turn off the pressure. Nah. They didn't turn off the heat, like, offensively and defensively. You know when they turned it down? When, oh, Mike White came into the game. Then you <laughs> knew. But I liked how the Dolphins got down to that position where they're like, well, we're at the four. It's fourth down. What's less of a jerk move? Kicking the field goal or the touchdown? Nah, we'll go for the touchdown. Oh, well. It, I mean, it's true, though. Should have offered him the job, Ron Rivera. Maybe he would have shown you the mercy it, that he showed true? Sean is, Payton. Is it true? What can you say if you're the other yeah, team? What can you do? I don't know. You'd be more insulted if you kicked the field goal. <laughs> right? Like, you're in a no-win position there. No, you're well, in a win-win situation. It ain't your, it ain't your, your fault. They can't stop you. I like that. Uh, Larry Zonka yesterday, who was great. It was he was in uh he was in twi- in his peak Twitter form yesterday, where he just goes, "Should we have been playing Von Ginkle more?" Hashtag MIA versus WAS. Hashtag yes. bins up. Hashtag NFL. Yes, yes. Like wait, it went from, and and it's not his fault at all. Went for, oh, Von Ging's got to play now. To why wasn't he not playing? Because if you think about last year, he really didn't do anything that would warrant him not getting an opportunity. He wasn't terrible. No, he was all like, over the field. Dude, this was guy. This guy was like a a whisker away from being a Patriot this offseason. Though they they basically like had a Fangs last minute recruit to bring him back, and. Is amazing. I mean, he's probably going to be defensive player of the week. I mean, he he's all over the place. So you think about this: the energy that that front seven plays with, right? I mean, you could. Get, I mean, does anybody remember what Christian Wilkins did to Brees Hall? Oof. Fifty yards down the field. Terrible. Right. So, like, just that action. We, sure, sure, we can get away with. You know, Sealer taking a, a knee every now and then because he can't run. <laughs> Look, he's a monster. It's just a if, monster, if he doesn't right? get if he doesn't get there, he doesn't have it's not fair that your best friend has the pursuit of a of of a lion after the quarterback. Because right. I think most people are like Sealer. It's just right. that your best friend has this insane motor that he that he keeps chasing. But like if he didn't get to howl like the first move, he's like, Oh damn. <sighs> yeah. That Sam Howell boy, he does sling it. Oh yeah, he's throwing. He's trying to throw it up there for and, sure. And the, here's the thing: of all the young quarterbacks that we've seen, he's actually not bad. No, he he's just not got bad. no time. He's running for his life. But some of the throws that he made on the run mm-hmm. were, were really good. Yeah, he just, I think they got nothing. And th- this is what kills quarterbacks too: the fact that now it's, it's, he's it's not going to be able to progress as a professional quarterback because. The only thing he knows is running for his damn life. It's kind of impressive that he actually throws for as many yards as he does that he's not gun shy. <laughs> he's not going to get killed. You'd be old Derek Carr check down. Oof. Check down Charlie. Uh, we'll take a quick break. Lots to get to. We'll hear a little bit from Cheetah and Tua after the game. Marcos? Yes? Look at you and me, dude. A couple two and Ooh. oneers after the first Ooh. week. You know? oh, a couple two and oneers, you know? <laughs> Here we go. (laughs) Take a quick break. We are streaming live on YouTube and Twitch, Miami 560 WQAM. Back after this. Previously. The old love using the term up to snuff. Tobin and Leroy here with you. 560 WQAM. Take you up until 2 o'clock. Miami Dolphins. Blowout city yesterday over the Washington commanders uh we got a great show yesterday from tua and tyree kill although i think my favorite part of the broadcast honestly if i had to pick 
was getting a preview of how much Tua loves Christmas because we were asking for this for hard knocks. We know this man loves Christmas. We have known this for a long time. He loves Christmas. He loves Christmas. And yesterday, because it was a blowout, they go to hard knocks material during the broadcast and they go, uh, well, stink. Uh, did you know Tua loves Christmas? And take a look at this. And it goes to a QB meeting. I'm assuming they're trying to come up with some maybe meeting playlist. I don't know if you ever get a little uh, maybe note-taking music. I don't know what was going on. But Tua, but Tua was upset with Mike White and Skylar Thompson because they don't want to listen to Christmas music. And he goes, fine, I'll just get an AirPod by myself. And I'll listen to it. He goes, you're just going to be listening to Michael Buble? He goes, oh, Silver Bells? And then you know how the, the kids will say, Leroy, that a, that a song slaps? Yes. He literally says silver bells and slaps his knee. Like 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 just with jolly Christmas joy to a. And then I love Christmas. He says the term that I never thought I'd ever hear out of anybody. Yes, here he comes. Michael Bublé is a beast. I love Christmas. He loves Christmas. Michael Bublé <laughs> is a beast. Well, He's not as much of a beast as Mariah Carey, whose one song, oh yeah, every Christmas hits number one on the chart. Dominant, dominant. I mean, that is that's better than the Patriots. That's better than the old Celtics. Like she is undefeated with this song. Michael Boob, like he, like we, we thought, like we heard from him before. I love Christmas. It has come out. He's been wearing Christmas pajamas after a game before. No, this man is like, I'll get AirPod. I'll get one AirPod. I'll listen to it myself. We're not going to listen to Christmas music here because I love Christmas. He wants to hear his Christmas music. And quite frankly, if I were Tua, I would make Skylar Thompson and Mike White dress like elves to entertain me Wait, in the meeting room. You can't do that. I love Christmas. Why not? You can only do it to the rookies. No, they should no. They need to be hazed for their lack of Christmas joy. <laughs> really? Yes. Wait. So, so you want to get them for lack of Christmas joy? And there was one athlete out there talking about the world is flat. What should happen to him? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but like they need Listen, to- as as and and keep in mind. As egregious as you think that is, there's far more worse things. Like people that don't like Christmas music, I get that, right? You got to be into Christmas to like the music, right? It's just like, I look forward to all those raggedy looking cartoons from the 70s and 80s. Bro, I got, dude, can I tell you? I got got for $8 this weekend because I got my son the classic Rudolph. They don't have it available anywhere. They, They were like, I'm like, nobody is streaming classic Rudolph? No, eight dollars. No, you gotta go to one of your streaming. Uh, dude, it's not anywhere because uh, like uh, they'll tell you like other ways to watch Amazon. They're like, nope, we're so, we're holding this sucker because we know you're gonna buy it for seven bucks, and they were right. <laughs> Did he enjoy it at least? Loved it. Oh, okay, loved Come it. On. Come on, you, you, like those are classics, and even though, l- let's just say, the CGI was point five. Oh my okay? god. Don't go into it thinking like you go see Kyler Ren doing lightsaber work and things like that. You're not, right? It is the OG of cartoons and claymation. They don't move smoothly, right? Sometimes the lips are moving with the words. That's okay. It's enjoy. Christmas uh shows are amazing. I I, I can't. Look, if I'm look, I could be watching the most important thing in the world. If I pass one of them channels and there's a cartoon on, er, which one? Oh, this one with the abdominal snow band. I got this one. Yukon Cornelius <laughs> had to think on his feet. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Wait. So so that is must see TV. You got to you tell me what like I don't know. I think you have to be older though. I think as a kid. Because understand, like when I was a kid, mm-hmm. they would show one of these cartoons for like the first day of December all the way up until Christmas. So it was like one every night. 
So you, it was which one is this? Which one they playing tonight? Which one yeah. is, you know, they ain't have like, you know, the thing that you have, you know, you got to look at the TV guide, right? So, yeah. So now, you know, they kind of binge them. Like they show them all in one day on a channel or, and, and listen, okay. I've seen the Christmas story. I don't need to see it all day. Oh, that's a you know, TBS. The, that's that's a TBS yeah. move right there. They showed the same movie all day. Come on, lazy. Yeah. So, Somebody who's not lazy, Tyreek Hill. He's no. very fast. Very fast. Here he was. This was him on his second touchdown to uh, to two of the one where he made that uh, crazy adjustment. This is uh, him describing what the hell happened there. The second touchdown. It was like surprising, man. It was like. It was like a cover three. I feel I, I believe it was cover three. And um the way that um I ran my route, I thought I ran a perfect route. And I had to I was looking this way and I had to adjust back this way. And you know, it was just one of those things that, you know, Tua he does a great job of throwing the ball exactly where it needs to be. And I thought he was wrong. Went back and watched the film. It's like, bro, like you threw the ball exactly where I was supposed to be. Cause I was bending it in and I wasn't supposed to bend it in. So it was just one of those things that's Talk, put it up, man. He down there somewhere. So. You, you went and watched it with him? Watched yeah. It no, so we, we watched it right after it happened because we got iPads on the sideline. And I was like, bro, like, you can't throw me like that, bro. Like, And he was like, bro, I threw it exactly where, like, we teach it. I was like, no way. He pointed out on film. I was like, yeah, you're right. My bad. <laughs> oh, say he pulled out a red flag. You want to review it? <laughs> <laughs> This is their relationship. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry too. My bad. I mean, been. and this is after a touchdown. I think it's hard for for Tyreek Hill to ever quibble with Tua because he's got 1,500 yards already. So you know what? Or or just knocking on the door of 1,500 yards. We've got like 1,475 with. Uh, he T-Flex. is. Uh, let's see. He has 1,481 yards. You want to know what second place is? Just over a thousand. That's uh Pika <laughs> Pikachu, right? It's not Pikachu. It's uh, CD Lamb, uh, eleven hundred and eighty-two. Oh, okay. Pikachu just went over a thousand. Pikachu. <laughs> Is it? P- uh... I know. Yeah, the the dude on the Rams. Yeah. P- Puka Nakua. Puka Nakua. Yeah. Puka Nakua. Hey, yeah, so so here's the crazy thing about him. Pikachu's much better. <laughs> it looked like <laughs> it looked like he had to be life lighted out of that game, right? Hmm. And then all of a sudden, you blink your head and 17's running down the field again. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. You can't look like we're going to have to take you directly to x-ray to the hospital because he, look, they brought him off the field. He was like this. And I'm telling you, 15 minutes later, he was running down the field. Like nothing happened. Uh, Karen says, uh, does that mean that Tua has more successful challenger flags than Mike McDaniel? I knew he wasn't going to win that challenge. First of all, I don't see the point in, in challenging that early. It just seems like a waste of time. Here's, you here's the you thing. know the commanders aren't going to do it again. Here's, here's the problem, though. The problem is, is that sometimes you challenge it not necessarily because you think you're right, but it just looks like a play that should be challenged because you're not sure, right? And then it kind of slows up. I love the way challenges happen right after big plays. You could call timeout. It's like a, a timeout basketball when the team going to a, a ten a point run, right? Timeout. So it, it does a lot of things other than just the challenge. It does uh, give you an opportunity to break up the the little run or whatever to get everybody recomposed. To the like, and you might as well just had, say you had an excuse to call a timeout, which is a challenge. They had a, uh, yeah, they had that. I mean, like, I don't like how sometimes they got to let a play play out, like last night and Sunday night, where they had to have like the scoop and score go all the way back. I'm like, you know, he was down. What are we doing here? Wasting time. Because you can, here's why they do it because you can fix that. But if you blow it dead, you can't. False it's joy. Dead, it's dead right at that moment. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. If you, you blow it dead, it's dead. You can't do nothing about it. If you let the play continue, right, then you can go back and fix it. So that's why they let it play out. Yesterday, uh, Tyreek Hill tweets out, Tua, best in the world. Love that. I think he meant <laughs> world, but. Nah. Best in the world. Best in the world. <laughs> 
Honestly, Honestly, Bill Simmons. You're like Tobin. <laughs> Uh, I love it, man. The, those guys are, uh, they are linking up. They're so it, much fun to watch. Did you feel good? One thing I felt good about is that was the first time in a long time that they jumped out to a lead and kept applying pressure. Yeah. So, so the, and, and I get it as the commanders, they never had a chance no. from start to finish. They never had a chance. Well, I think the thing that's it's it's great for a couple of samples. They did that. They kept it right, and they did it on the road. Um, and yeah, anytime like, you can win a, a road game like that, you you have to think we're pretty good at home. Yeah, and that gives us one additional home game, right? Dude, they have now four out of their last five all at home. Right, that's what I'm saying. Remember eight. the beginning of the year when they got off to that great start, and then you realize mm-hmm. all these things were on the road. So when it gets to the end of the season. We're going to be in our own bed. Mm-hmm. Everybody's going to be doing their own thing. Right. Like, think, yeah. I think I saw this morning that if the Jaguars win out, they get the, or the number, number one, one seed. seed. They control right. it. But if they lose tonight, you know what that puts the Dolphins? Number one. Catbird seed. Uh-huh. I'd, rather, I'd rather not be number one this early. Why not, baby? Because. Why not, baby? I'm just saying. Let it ride. No, like, like stop that. Stop. Why? Because I want them to have the feeling of chasing, right? December is where you start playing your best basketball. I mean, best football. At no point in time do I want them to feel like they can relax. So if you're in chase mode, you're always applying pressure, right? If you know that the team that is first, right, they have to slip up. You still applying pressure. You still winning. You're still preparing. You're still doing all the things so you don't let them out of your reach, right? If you're up there, it's a different mentality. If you don't, believe, if you don't think karma is a real thing, how is it that the New England Patriots have lost three straight, giving up ten or less points? I, first of all, if I may, <laughs> I didn't ten want ten or less wait. points. I did not want to pick this game, <laughs> but it was like you had other no, choices. Not really, <laughs> right? And I picked it reluctantly, and I'm like, I want a game with the team, the favorite, scoring six points. <laughs> Think about that. How does Bill Belichick just not go back, like? He, he just has to think to himself, look, this is the payoff. Like, you know, but Robbie always had the saying, the bill is due. Bill Belichick's karma bill is due. I'm sorry. It just is. Like, this man, the cheating, the Super Bowls, he deserves to sit back there. Three straight games. My defense has given up 10, 10, 6, 0, oh, and 3. Is that unbelievable? 10, 10, 6 points, no wins. So they they might be leading the leading scoring a defensive scoring average because in the last three games they've given up a total of twenty six points. It, it, it's incredible. They've I mean like it is I, I I don't even understand what we're watching. But how my thing is this? I get the offense is terrible, terrible. But you can't say that they're not. The, this never happens. They went full zappy yesterday. They finally. Uh, but this never happens. Your defense gives up 10, 10, and 6, and in the NFL, you lose all three? I don't think – I think 1938 was the last time it happened. I think I saw it. With no forward passes? 1938. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Take a quick break. Back after this.